everyone, my name is Kathleen Metcalf, and this is my Art 110 P2 uh, video blog. This is take two, because YouTube lost my first video. But anywho, um, my plaster casting experience. Um, it was fun. I went to the beach, uh, to Huntington Beach with another girl from class, and um, I got all excited because I was going to do my hand pose like this and like take it home and make this like badass ring holder or something like that. But then um, I was a little disappointed because as I dug out my sculpture, I realized that when I poured the, uh, the plaster in, some of the, like, the fingers like in the mold collapsed. And so I ended up with something more like this. Kind of like something out of a zombie movie with missing fingers and... I don't know, kind of looks torn apart. Anywho, um, I still kind of like it though. I could definitely do something with this. Um, oh, that was fun. Um, it was a, definitely something I'd never tried before. Um, and I just like being at the beach, so that's always a plus. Um, um, the three D artists on the list. Um, the two artists that I looked at were Polly Morgan and Maurizio Catalan. Um, Polly Morgan, I, I'd never seen any work like hers before, partly because I didn't know that anyone worked with taxidermy in the fine art world. Um, I put some of her pictures on my blog for this video, so if you want to take a look, feel free. Um, I really, really like her work, actually. I, I don't know, it's very different than any other sort of taxidermy you'll see, because instead of setting her animals in a, um, a naturalistic setting, She's got all these different surreal situations, like one of the ones that I like a lot is called Vestige, and it's just this little bell jar with a little um, a little bird just laying on a book and with a tiny little chandelier hanging over it, and it totally looks like it's sleeping, but obviously it's not because it's taxidermy. Um, but it just looks so peaceful, and it's a really cute bird. Um, <laughs> another one of her pieces, I think it's her largest piece actually um is called at the beginning and it has it's, it's inspired by a gothic flying machine idea so it's this giant brass cage basically and it has all of these giant carrion birds and birds of prey just like lifting it, it looks like they're lifting it off the ground it's really cool um and then she is things that are a little more cute I guess you could call it. Um, there's a giant martini glass that has a little fox just like curled up inside it. Um, there's a bunch of different uh, things that she's done with just like small stuffed birds like baby quail and things like that and they're just like in a, a tall bell jar being lifted up by a balloon up here and they just look like they're being drug off the ground. Um, one of her creepier pieces that I actually like a lot is called um, Former Things, and it's this uh, dining room scene where it's just two people or two place settings and a dining table. And at one place setting is this woman who has her head in her hands, and at the other end there's uh, a taxidermy bird perched on uh, the back of a chair. And the place setting at the bird's place, like the plate and the fork, are just like melting off the table, and it looks like this whole just personification of despair. It's really interesting, especially some of the um, the photography done before the piece was actually installed in a proper gallery um, just to document it are really interesting, really um, dark muted colors um, and I don't know, it, it begs a story. It's really cool. Um, so then Maurizio Catalan um, he also kind of goes for <laughs> surrealist situations, but a bit more comically so. Um, one of his pieces is this elephant that it's just, it's fake, it's not taxidermy. He, he works with a couple of taxidermy animals, but most of his stuff he makes. Um, but it's just this elephant, and it looks like, you know, like a kid who, like on a Halloween, and they, uh, go out as a ghost, and they just got a, a sheet over them with, like, eyes, eye holes cut out. Well, this is an elephant. It looks like he dressed up like a ghost with just a bed sheet on him and, like, a giant hole cut out for the trunk. Is 
really interesting and it kind of reminds me of that whole saying of like an elephant in the room except this is like the elephant hiding in the room in a very childish manner so it, it kind of makes me think of like people hiding things like about themselves but hiding in a childish manner and just um you know faking it really that's what it reminds me of um then there's kind of this piece that looks like um uh, Mauricio's opinion or an attitude on death, I guess. But it's this little taxidermy squirrel, and he's just sitting on a tiny chair at a tiny table, and he's slumped over the table, and there's a tiny handgun at his feet, as if he had just shot himself. And just as it's a squirrel, it's kind of comical, though it's dark all the same. Um... I don't know. I just, I find it actually a very amusing piece. Maybe I'm just forgotten. Um, and then one piece that I thought was actually really impressive was um, this piece that he has with two uh, cops. And obviously he's, like, made the human faces and bodies and everything. Um, which is really impressive because they're very, very well done. They're very believable. Except for the fact that dressed fully in uniform and everything... They're upside down and balanced on the tips of their hats, which I think is also, again, a mockery, um, this time of authority, really. That's what it's, it says to me. Um, comparing them, though, uh, Polly and Maurizio, um, they both use a lot of found things in their work. Um, Maurizio using more, like, clothing and things, but they both use um, you know, furniture and dishes and things. Um, although with Polly's, really all of her materials are found considering that she uses animals that are, are dead or of, of natural causes generally, I guess. Um, and, uh, so she just, like, basically rebuilds the skeleton, stuffs them, poses them. Whereas Maurizio, um, most of the animals that he uses in his artwork are made by him. Um, so, really, um, their work is actually pretty similar in terms of being surrealist and, um, I don't know, they seem to both have interesting views on death and authority and, um, kind of, in some terms, just a goofiness about them. Um, between the plaster casting and some of the work of these two artists, um, the plaster casting, I think, is more similar to Maurizio's style of work because he actually does casting for, like, the human faces and, um, like, some of, like, the, um, like, the elephant. He, uh, of course, made, like, a sculpture and then did a casting of it and then, of course, did all, like, the painting and stuff that goes with it. Um, but <laughs> obviously what we did is a much more rudimentary form of that, um, Although I don't really know where I would begin doing something as sophisticated as basically building a human body um, out of, I don't know exactly what he used. Uh, but, yeah, it's really interesting. Um, this project, I like it a lot. I liked it a lot because uh, it got me to step out of my comfort zone and try something that I had never tried before, but also um, take a look at some artists who I had I'd never heard of either of them before, but I found their work very interesting. Um, in all respects, I really like um, Polly Morgan's work, and obviously that was her her style of working was something that her medium, I guess you could call it, um, was something that I'd never seen before. So I'm actually really happy with the results of this project that I got to try something new. All right, thank you guys for listening to me, and see you in class.